And joining us for this week's Your Health segment is Terry Dyer, nurse practitioner with the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Group. Terry, thanks for being with us. Sure, thanks for having me, Jeff. So we talked about some of the fun parts of the holiday season. Now we're going to talk about the not so fun parts in flu season. Uh, when does it get rolling? So it typically starts in October and runs through till May is the high season for the flu. All right. Now, who needs a flu shot? Well, in my opinion, everyone should get the flu shot. It's really important for young children under the age of five or for people who are older than 65 or if you have chronic medical conditions because you're at higher risk for some of the you know, effects of the flu. And, and the reason it's not like other vaccines where you, you do it once in childhood and you're done is that the flu kind of evolves? Well, it's, it's a virus and it mutates and changes. And so each year we get a little bit different viral particles. And what the CDC does is take last year's flu season and try to take the particles that they feel will be most commonly repeated and they put that in the upcoming uh, flu vaccine, which they did for this year. And sometimes you'll, you'll get a mismatch uh, where the, the defense isn't quite lined up for, for where the, the flu is, is coming. But, but this year, it's pretty close. So that's the good news for this year. There's a couple new things out this year with the flu. And the one thing is they feel like they have a much better match for the flu. We have two A virus, um, influenza A viruses in the vaccination, as well as uh, two Bs if you get the vaccine that has the four in them, and it's a pretty good match. All right. They Why do you like think people don't always get vaccinated? Everybody says do it. Not Obviously, not everybody does it. Yeah. So I think one of the, the big myths about the flu vaccine and getting that and making that decision is a lot of people say, I'm going to get the flu if I get the flu vaccine. The vaccine will give me the flu. And that's definitely a myth. The flu vaccine is not a live virus. You cannot get the flu from the flu vaccine. Um, what does typically happen, though, Jeff, if you... So right now it's in the community. Um, and if you come in contact with someone with the flu, you can get the flu. Even if today you come in and get the flu virus from our office, you have two weeks till you build up that immunity. So if you come in contact after you get the flu virus vaccine, you could get the, the flu. So you think that's yeah, what it weeks. is when, when you hear somebody say, I got the vaccine and two days later felt terrible. It's right. just dumb it, luck. It, well, they came in contact with someone who has had the flu. So if you come in contact with someone with the flu, it takes anywhere from one to four days to develop the symptoms. And again, if you get the vaccine, it takes two weeks to be protected. So any time before you get it or up to two weeks after, you could still get the flu, but it's not from the vaccine. It's because you've been exposed to the virus. So you really don't want to wait until Valentine's Day to get your flu <laughs> right. shot. Right. Although you could, you could potentially if the... So the recommendations from the CDC are if the flu, va flu va um, illness is still active, it's okay to get the vaccine, even though it's late in the season. We've given them out as late as February, even later. All right. Um, so somebody comes into your office and uh, they're, they're feeling badly, they have a headache and stuffy and aches and pains. How, how do you determine whether they have the flu? That's an excellent question. So the, the flu symptoms are a little bit vague. You could have a cough, you could have a sore throat, you could have a fever achy all over. A lot of viruses have those presentation. But we have a rapid influenza A and B test. It takes a few minutes to run it in the office, and that is pretty accurate. And we'll be able to tell, you know, if you have the flu right then and there. And there's some of those in-office tests that are, like, notoriously inaccurate. They're, at least when my kids were little, the strep test. They would, they would do it. And then they would say, well, it's only like 80% accurate, so we don't, we don't really know. Th this one's better? So the efficacy is pretty good with the influenza test. Um, if it's negative and you feel the patient may still have the flu, there is that low percentage where you get a false negative. You could treat the patient for right. the flu if they present with those symptoms. Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question about the flu, treating the flu or getting the flu vaccine, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also tweet your questions. Twitter address is at MPT News. Let's work our way up. So somebody's feeling sick. They're not sick enough in their mind to, to go seek medical help. They want to do some home remedies. Anything that works? 
So you can always treat the symptoms. If you have a fever, you can take Tylenol or Motrin if you're not allergic to those. You want to stay hydrated. You don't want to get dehydrated. But the key point here is if you think you may have the flu, it's better to go to your doctors and get diagnosed correctly because you, there's a uh, medication, an antiviral that you can take so that you don't develop serious uh, effects from the flu. Now one, so it's better I, don't to really... I don't know if there's more than one brand name, but I've heard of Tamiflu. Most people have probably heard of Tamiflu. Yes. Is that what we're talking about and who is it appropriate for? So Tamiflu is given to pediatric children all the way up to, you know, elderly people. You can give the Tamiflu. So that is the, that is the most popular uh, treatment for the flu. There's three different medications, but that's the most popular one that we use. And you don't feel better necessarily five hours later, but it's known to shorten the course. Is that the idea? Exactly. So it doesn't take the flu from you. Once you get the flu, you have it, but the antiviral medication will decrease the length of the illness and the severity. It will be, uh, you know, less symptoms, not, a, not as severe. Any, any patients for whom that wouldn't be an appropriate thing to do? Um, well, if you are having a fever and you're feeling short of breath and you have a sore throat and you're very, very tired and lethargic, you want to definitely get checked by your doctor. And again, if you think you have the flu, even if you're not that sick from it, you should see your doctor so that you don't progress to more serious problems. Now, when people start talking about the stomach flu, that's something else. Yes. Right, that's generally norovirus. But, but with the with the flu, flu, can somebody have an upset stomach? That's an excellent question. You can get nausea and vomiting, even a little bit of diarrhea. It's not common, but you can get it. We see that more in children and in the pediatric population. Okay, but when it comes to then the stomach flu, mislabeled though it may be, there's not much. There's no vaccine for that. There's no Tamiflu for that, is there? Cor correct. The, the influenza A and B, which is the vaccine, is upper respiratory. It's not a, a GI virus per se. All right, let's grab a phone call from Anne Arundel County. This is Emily. Uh, Emily, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Yes, my question is this. I was told that I should not get the flu vaccine because I'm allergic to AIDS and sulfur-based medications. So I want to know if that it holds true or not. We'll get you an answer on the air. Thank you very much. Is there an alternative for uh, egg allergies? So actually, I'm glad you brought that up. They are The CDC is now recommending if you have an egg allergy and you only get a rash as your uh, exposure to the egg, you are okay to get the flu vaccine this year. That is new this year. If you get more serious reactions with eggs, um, breathing problems, swollen lips, swollen tongue, you know, airway problems, as uh, wheezing, then you definitely need to get the flu vaccine at your doctor's where they have medications in case you have trouble and you need to stay there for 30 minutes. I've to always be wondered about uh, healthcare providers. So you work in a place where I don't know how many hundreds of people are going to come through with all manner of illnesses, including the flu and the stomach flu. Do, do you guys get sick all the time? Well, I think the more you get exposed to viruses, like even with the vaccine, the more you get exposed, the, the, the better your immunity is built up. And I feel like we're at risk and we, we need to have the vaccine to work in the healthcare field. We are at risk because of our exposure, but I do feel that we, we naturally build immunity because of all of our exposures. Because the, like the norovirus is just supposed to be incredibly contagious, right? right? I mean, it happens on cruise ships and everybody gets sick, but, but somehow not everybody at the doctor's office gets it. That's true. And well, one of the things we're trained is wash your hands, right? That's the most important thing if you talk to any infectious disease to, to prevent spread of any virus or any infection is to wash your hands. And healthcare workers wash their hands a lot. So that may also be part of the reason why they... Well, and that's a, that's a great tip if, if somebody's at home, whether with little kids or not, and, and somebody's sick, what you can, can do within a household to try to limit the, the spread of it. Yes, wash your hands. If people are coughing, have them cover their, you know, cover their mouth because it's spread by air droplets. So you want to cover your mouth if you're coughing and always, always wash your hands. It's the best way to prevent spread of infection. Let's take a call from uh, Baltimore City. This is Manet. Thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. How are hi. you doing this evening? Good. Um, how are you? 
I'm fine, thank you for asking. Happy holidays to you both. To you thank too. You. Uh, my question is, I'm a certified health, um, I'm a certified pharmacy technician. My question is, I run across a lot of people who find misconceptions with get, getting ill in correlation to getting the, um, the flu shot. What are some of the things that I can say to them to ensure that they get the flu shot? Mene, are, are you one of the people at the pharmacy who's giving the flu shot? Well, I actually don't give flu shots, but when I speak to some of the people, I try to ensure them. You know, that's part of what we do at the pharmacy is to try to make sure that our customers get flu shots. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for calling. What do, yeah. what do you think? So, Mene, that's, that's actually a good question. I would definitely tell them it's not a live virus. Uh, the, the injections are... Um, again, not a live virus. You cannot get the flu from the uh, vaccine, but you can tell them that if they get the vaccine, they still take up to two weeks to be protected, so they still need to avoid sick people, you know, wash their hands real well. Um, and the best way absolutely to protect them, their children, and the community is to get the vaccine. I've thought about getting vaccinated. We were talking about where you get the flu shot before the program. I thought about doing it at the pharmacy, but it, it tends to be a, uh, a folding chair and a flimsy partition. And there, I, I know they want to be given the flu shots at the pharmacy. They're not quite inspiring confidence. It doesn't quite look like a doctor's office yet, but there's no reason not to go get your flu shot there. No, you can definitely get your flu shot there. You can get it at your doctor's office. You can get it at urgent care centers. Um, and again, you can get it. This is National uh, Influenza Vaccination Week. So, and you can tell, um, you know, your clients that too, as well, Mene, that this is the week. So it's not too late. We're trying to remind everybody, everybody get their flu vaccine now. Call from Allegheny County. This is Hilda. Hilda, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hello. Hi, you're on. Oh, yes. I would like to, uh, to know if there are three types of the uh, flu uh, vaccine that can be given. I understand the, my physician uh, gave me one that was for seniors uh, in their 80s. And... Uh, I wanted to know if there are three types and what they are. Hilda, thank you so much. That's a great question. We do appreciate it. Now, for seniors, I, I read that there may be a stronger version, but there are, as you told me, two different versions, one with three uh, variations of the virus and one with four. Correct. So there's actually several different vaccines that the CDC has approved this year for people to get the standard vaccine, then you have the high dose uh, vaccine, which you're talking about, um, and that is for elderly people 65 and older. There's also a recombinant vaccination um, that they use uh, viral uh, technique to make for the uh, vaccination. That's another option. And there is a jet injector uh, vaccination you can get, whereas they don't use a needle, but they use a uh, propelled high um, with the fluid that's propelled into the skin with um, at a high rate with an injector. So the, the needle um, sounds like more fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but the, for for seniors for 65 and older, we do have those two other vaccines which are are new this year and the CDC are recommending. So that is another option, or you can get the standard that will work as well. Fairfax County, this is Lisa. Lisa, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Yes, hi. I have a question about, I have a 10-year-old daughter who got her flu shot last year and has suffered long-term pain in her shoulder from the spot where the shot is. Um, so I was about to get her, her one this year when right when we walked in the doctor's office, I thought I better do a search, long-term shoulder pain uh, flu shot. And honest to gosh, a bunch of uh, research, a bunch of different problems came up about it. That um, Not so much that the pharmacies were injecting into the bursa, but possibly the, um, the four-way shots have maybe uh, a stronger effect in the shoulder muscle itself. Well, let's get you an answer. Lisa, thank you very much. 
Ever heard of that? So um, that's not something that we really see or hear about too much, but you are injecting fluid into the muscle and there are nerves around the muscle. So, you know, if the nerve gets inflamed, you could, you know, nerves potentially can uh, have a ongoing burning or pain sensation. I'm not sure if that's what happened with your daughter, but that's not something that we typically really see very often at all. And uh, before we go, we've talked about all these variations on the vaccine. We didn't talk about flu mist for a reason. Right. So, great. Thanks for bringing that up, Jeff. That's one thing I really wanted to get out to the public is the flu mist, which we've used in the past a lot. The CDC is not recommending you get that this year. There are some available. However, the CDC is recommending you do not get the flu mist, that you do get one of the injections. There's question on whether that's effective or not. The, the efficacy is question. Very good. Uh, Terry Dyer, a nurse practitioner with the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Group here in Owings Mills. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, for Appreciate having me. It. And thank everybody you. get their flu shots this week. There you go. I'm on notice. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.